<laughs> if you're just getting into quadcopters, an excellent thing to do is get a toy like this one. This is just a little small quadcopter and this can be flown indoors and this will help you get down your orientation on flying this. It'll help you learn that when the camera or the front of it is pointing away from you, forward is forward, back is back, right is right, left is left. And it can also help you start to develop that when it's flying toward you, forward is actually, you know, this way instead of that way. And this is left and this is right. And it just helps you get your orientation down. Now the bad thing about this is this little toy quadcopter like this one and most of them that you find in the stores aren't gonna help you learn to fly acro mode. And a lot of people like to get the uh, simulators and practice on there to learn to fly acro mode. However, there is another option. This is an H8 mini quadcopter. This is also a little toy. Now this one is special in that it runs open source firmware. And I bought the white one. Let's see what else came in here. It comes with the quadcopter and the little uh, transmitter, which looks a lot like this one. And it also comes with a um, USB cable and some of these little things to help. Uh, the little landing gear, extra propellers, and a screwdriver to, I don't know, help you get something apart, help you take it apart, I guess. Anyway, like I said, the cool thing about this one is, is that it runs open source firmware. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to put, of course, different firmware on. Now this one flies almost identically to this one in, in regards to auto level and uh, coming back, you know, and you can change the modes on this to make it more sensitive and less sensitive. Well, what the uh, open source firmware allows you to do, it allows this to be flown in acro mode and you can flip it between acro mode and auto level mode. And that's what I'm gonna be trying to do with this one. In fact, I haven't even flown this one yet. This is a little USB programmer that you can buy. This thing's like three or four dollars and it uh, plugs into your computer and you use open source software that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit to reflash onto your quadcopter to make it fly in acro mode. Then I have this one here, and this is the um, the male part of it, I think. And this thing slides in here like this. And this part uh, right here is actually going to be soldered onto the inside of the quadcopter, and I'm going to show you how to do that. All these instructions are out on the web. I'm just going to make a video so that you can make it easier for you to do it yourself. Anyway, let me get this thing started, and uh, we'll get this thing soldered up, and we'll see how it goes. So here on the bottom of the quadcopter, the first thing I'm going to do is get the battery out of the way. And this is a 150 milliamp hour battery. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. 150 milliamp hour battery, 3.7 volts. And what you have to do is you have six screws on here. One, two, or sorry, three. One, two, and three screws. You have to take all three of these screws out on every arm. And then the, the body should be able to pull apart. And it's going to give us access to the inside where the solder points are. Here I have all the screws removed, and I'm gonna pull this apart real carefully. There we go. What? <laughs> Look at that. It's already pre-burnt. Good, they got a, I got a pre-burnt version. Oh, good. Anyway, I haven't even flown this yet, just not as an honest truth. Right here is the ground, this is the DAT, and this is the CLK. And those are the three points that we're gonna be soldering to. Now since we, since all the uh, pieces in here are all individual, it doesn't matter what order we solder these into, but we're gonna put, since we're using this thing here, I'm gonna hook the ground up to the ground. In this case, my ground is the uh, brown wire. And then the other two, I just gotta remember where they go and solder those on. And then we'll f uh, flash it. And then once it's flashed with the new firmware, We'll just unsolder this because I don't ever plan on changing the firmware again after the acro is on. So there, the three wires are soldered onto there. And again, like I said, I got the uh, brown wire on the ground. And then the other two, I just put them in that order. Ground at CLK. Now it's a matter of plugging in the little cable here into my computer, making sure the drivers work and figuring out which pins go to so where. So on the ST-Link programmer here, you can see I'm using the, well, you can't see it yet, but the SWDIO ground and SW click there, right there, those three. And so I plugged them into the top three pins on this side, which you can't see very well. But they're in the, they're in the when you're looking at it this way, they're on this side where my finger is. And back here, I got them plugged into the uh, right pieces up here. And I'll go ahead and put that on the screen so I don't have to say it and get it wrong. And uh, just make sure you get the pins lined up correctly and you should be fine. Now it's just a matter of getting the software loaded for this and for the flashing program. This is the Drone Garage blog uh, WordPress website. 
I'll have links to this down in the description. And here are the pieces of software that we're going to have to download and get these installed. And all the instructions on how to install all these are down here below and um, they're not really too complex. I'm trying to download the MDK support and I'm going to be choosing this one here on the left, the, the Cortex-M devices. There's also this one here, but on this page you actually want to download the version, whoa, version 5.15 down here. So we'll see to how get this To get to the place where you download the U-Vision, this is what I did. I came here to the U-Vision webpage, I clicked on download, and you clicked on product downloads here, and then here I clicked on the MK, MDK ARM uh, file here and you got, you'll have to fill out a bunch of information the first time you probably just make it up and it'll probably be okay and then right here is the executable you click on it and it starts downloading the whole this part is about 400 meg so this is going to take a while to download the last part of the a software download is the zip file and this is where you can get just the acro firmware or you can get the dual mode where you can flip it between level and acro and this is the one that i'm going to get for now because my kids will probably be flying this and they have no idea how to fly an acro so we'll get the level so they can actually have some fun with it so here on this page when you're going to download the firmware you want to come over here and click on download zip and then extract that whole thing into its own directory once the firmware is extracted it should look similar to this so here's the MDK uh, software installing and it does a number of different installations here and after it installs it goes through some kind of little auto update and you can kind of see some of the progress down here in the corner I guess it's probably just best to let it run then it looks like this when it's finished. So shut this off and then we'll install the so next part. So here are the drivers installing because the drivers are the next thing we want to install. And good, they installed just fine. And the first thing I did was extract it and then I ran the uh, DP INST AM60, AMD 64 to 64 because this is a 64 bit computer. If you have 32 bit, you can probably run this one. The next thing to install is this Kelly and whatever this is and just say yes and install and it looks this like stuff. this and this is looks like it's just an update to the uh, previous one to help it support newer uh, at drivers. this point everything is installed except for the pack file that we downloaded and here i opened up u vision and we want to click on this little button right here and it's, if you hold your mouse over it, it says pack installer you want to click on that and then we want to go and find the pack that you downloaded which should be in your downloads directory Over here we're going to go to File, Import, and then we're going to go Find It and Select It. Here's my uh, pack file and I'll go ahead and click, click Open. And here it's going to go through, down here, uh, right here, it's going to go through this upgrade process again and should take a little bit of time. Alright, there it's finished. I have the USB adapter plugged in here now and it's actually um, looks like it was recognized correctly. With the firmware extracted, we want to come back into U-Vision and go to File Open and we want to go in and select the uh, firmware here and we're going to go into the H8 mini test and here's our project file. So I double click on it and it all opens up here like this and you can see it all this here nothing shows up in here because you didn't click on anything the next thing we do we come into uh, flash up here configure flash tools and we want to come over here to the debug tab and make sure this says ST link debugger in this case it does so that parts good the next thing to check is to come into project select device for target I'll put this on a screen, but as long as you're on this one here, you should be on the right one, and you can go ahead and push OK. Or actually, since we didn't change anything, you go ahead and push Cancel. The next thing we're going to go into is the um, Project, and then Build Target. And we're watching down here at the bottom, down here just making sure that the stuff keeps going across as long as the output keeps coming and this one says we have zero errors and zero warnings so we are good to keep moving on at this point we want to go ahead and take our battery this isn't the original battery but it's another one just like it and we want to power on the quadcopter all right mine's blinking lights and you want to go to flash erase and let it sit and it says down here at the bottom uh it says flashed finished okay 
So now you want to go to flash download and let it sit. And there you can kind of see a little bit of progress down here. And it says flash load. Whoa, flash load finished. All right. And now my quadcopter over here is going nuts. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery and disconnect the uh, USB stick. The next thing I'm going to do now is go back and unsolder these connections here and uh, put this back together and hopefully it binds back to the transmitter. So the pieces came unsoldered very easily and you can tell they uh, <laughs> kind of did a little, left a little bit of solder on there, but that's fine. Now it's just a matter of putting this back together with all the, um, what do you got, 12 screws to put back in. I have all the screws replaced. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to bind this, but this battery doesn't actually fit in here. So we're just going to see if it'll bind and try to take off even though, even though it's not the right battery. We can at least see. Okay, there it's plugged in. has its own little sequence there. I go ahead and I turn this on. It looks like it bound okay. So hopefully it spins up. Oh yeah. We're in business. Just got to wait for my small battery to charge that can fit in there. I couldn't wait for the battery to charge. I just zip tied this one on the bottom. All right. So this thing binds up just fine. You basically turn on, plug in the quadcopter and then turn this on. Now, if you didn't change anything like I didn't in your um, config file, when you go to take off, it'll be in the auto level mode. And you can see it's very easy to control for me right here. Whoa, now it's facing the wrong way. Okay. So it's in the auto level mode. So to get to the acro mode, you go, you on this side here, you push left, left, down. And you should see the lights blink like that. And that puts it into the acro mode. If you go, let me get this out of the way a little bit. If you push right, right, down, it puts it back into the auto level mode. And you can, whoa, you can see it's actually pretty easy to fly this way. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the acro mode. Uh, there we go. Left, left, down. There they blinked. Now we should be able to take off. And, oh yeah, it's definitely an acro mode. And I'm bashing into stuff. But that is acro mode. And this is going to be really good when it gets outside. This is one of my winter projects that I ordered, hoping that I would have some time to do it. And I did. It came in today. I had to get it done today. And so, anyway, what's the purpose of acro mode? The pur purpose is to get good at it because if you can get good at acro mode, you can just forget auto level and all your videos will smooth out and you'll have a lot better time flying. And once you get used to it, anytime you fly with the auto level on, you're going to start to hate it because you're going to feel like you are fighting it all the time. Anyway, this has been how to uh, upgrade the firmware on the H8 quadcopter. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.